The gravitation of stars bends light as it passes close to them. Let's derive an expression for this using this 2021 Oxford physics admission test. We have this expression for the angle theta, which is equal to lambda multiplied by gmrc, and we have some powers alpha, beta, and gamma. What we need to determine are the values of alpha, beta, and gamma. So the left-hand side of this equation does not have any dimensions. How about g? In order to determine the dimensions of the gravitational constant g, we can just use uh, Newton's law of universal gravitational attraction, so f is equal to minus g m m over r squared. Let's simplify this a little bit more, so rather than f, I'm just going to say that the force is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to cancel this, and what I'm left with is that a is equal to minus g m over r squared, meaning that g will be equal to minus a r squared divided by the mass. So that will be the dimensions of length multiplied by the dimensions of time raised to the power of minus 2, so that's meters per second squared, multiplied by the dimensions of distance or the dimensions of length squared. You can express these in units, however, they're typically expressed in general dimensions such as these. And then we're going to divide this by the units of mass. Let's simplify this a little bit so we get that the dimensions of g are l to the power of 3 multiplied by the dimensions of time raised to the power of minus 2 and uh, let's bring this up here, multiply by the dimensions of mass raised to the power of minus one. Now we can derive a general expression for the dimensions of the angle. So we can say that the dimensions of the angle are, lambda has no dimensions, the dimensions of g are l to the power of three, t to the power of minus two, m to the power of minus 1. Okay, then we're going to have m which is the mass, so the multiply by the dimensions of the mass raised to the power of alpha. r is just the distance, that will have the dimensions of length, so that will be l to the power of beta. C is the speed of light, therefore this will just have the dimensions of L multiplied by T to the power of minus 1, and both of these are raised to the power of gamma. So T to the power of minus 1, should we just say this is T raised to the power of minus gamma. So we get that uh, L will be raised to the power of 3 times L to the B, so that's be L raised to the power of 3 plus beta, and then we have another factor of L raised to the power of gamma, so it will be plus gamma multiplied, let's have a look at the next one, this is the dimensions of T, and that will be T raised to the power of minus 2 2 and also minus gamma multiplied multiplied by the dimensions of mass which are going to be minus 1 plus alpha because the left hand side has no dimensions all of these powers added up will have to equal to zero. In other words, we're going to have a system of three equations. So let's start off with the simplest one. Minus one plus alpha will be equal to zero. In other words, alpha will just be equal to one. Minus two minus gamma will be equal to zero, meaning that two plus gamma is equal to zero, meaning that gamma will be equal to minus two. And finally, 3 plus beta plus gamma will be equal to 0, i.e. 3 plus beta minus 2 is equal to 0, beta will be equal to plus 2 minus 3, beta will be just equal to minus 1. So our final equation for the angle at which light is bent around the star is actually 
right over here. Now what you need to see next is how the famous physicist Max Planck applied this technique to derive the Planck's length and this video is just over here.